Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures all generations. At this time, we will have the welcome and prayer for Sister Jasmine Long, followed by a selection from the youth choir. Welcome to Shadow Baptist Church Tuesday. As our name we chose, we are overcomers with Christ. Celebrations are a great way to acknowledge and express gratitude to God for his many wonderful blessings. Thank you for coming to join us and celebrating our graduates and praising God. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
graduates. We ask Sister Jasmine Long to please stand. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs>
Jaden Nathan Book reached the top five in the category of new releases in teen and young adult Christian devotionals and career on Amazon. Jaden is the host and producer of the Forever Podcast, which he founded in March 2020. The Forever Podcast mission is to inspire individuals to build a love community by embracing their God-given talents and gifts to, to make the world a better place. This past April, Jada became the youngest mom running Christian podcast host of all time in the category of religion and spiritually on all major podcasting platforms. Jada started public speaking at the tender age of nine in August of 2017 at a church in his hometown. Now he travels to school, churches, and a variety of events to spread, po to spread positivity and the goodness of Jesus Christ. <coughs> After a selection from the choir, the next voice you will hear is none other than Evangelist Jada Watkins. <laughs>
giving honor to Ms. Alice Foster Gales, the youth supervisor, for inviting me to speak and for coordinating the event, giving honor to all of the ministers of this branch of Zion, giving honor to my mother, Yamalette Foster, and my grandpa, Leon Foster, who is not here on today, my father, Eric Watkins, my stepfather, Craig Neal, giving honor to my twin sister, J.L. Watkins, and every family member and friend who has come on today. Can all my family please wave their hand? <laughs> giving honor to all of the graduates today and all the youth who have been promoted to the next grade. Just to make sure I don't forget anyone. Come on and put your hands together for yourself. And your <laughs> Giving honor to those who are watching online and will watch online. All right, I promise I will not be before you long, but there is a word from the Lord. Please grab your Bible or device and go with me now to the word of God. I will be reading Joshua chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. Joshua chapter 1, beginning in verse 5. Please stand in reverence to the reading of God's holy word. <coughs> Joshua chapter 1, beginning in verse 5. I will be reading from the King James Version. And it reads, No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Be strong, and I'll take my time and read it, and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips, meditating on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I just read Joshua chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. Let us pray. Jesus, I come humbly as I know how first to tell you thank you. Now, God, please remove me out of your way and allow your Holy Spirit to come in. I allow my words that come from my mouth be words from you. Bless this congregation who is yearning, our community who is yearning and needs you right now. Bless that young person that I feel in my spirit who are having suicidal thoughts and counsel them out. God, we praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. For the next few fleeting moments I want to use as my message title on today, you will win. Look at the person beside you. Look at the person beside you. They may owe you some money. This is a good time to get some money. One way for the people in my money. No, no, you can't do that. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you will win. The theme for today's service is we are overcomers with Christ. An overcomer is someone who gets through problems and adversities successfully. When I think of an overcomer, I think of someone that defeats someone or something. We can think of a Marvel or cartoon superhero when we think of an overcomer. We can think of a villain who defeats the quote unquote bad guys as an overcomer or in other words, a winner. Not only can make believe or cartoon characters be overcomers, but we too in reality can be overcomers. We can think of an overcomer as someone who goes from a C in school to a B. We can think of an overcomer as someone who drops fear and pick up their faith. Yeah. Fear holds us back from achieving our goals and being successful. But faith <laughs> allows us to overcome anything that we may face. Yes. And faith yes. allows us to achieve anything if we only believe through Jesus Christ. Yes. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 tells us that faith 
It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So just because I cannot see something right now, just because something has not yet been done, does not mean it is impossible. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 tells us that we can do all things through Jesus Christ, which strengthens us. I came by Shalom Baptist Church of Henderson to tell you that it does not matter what town you live in or you come from. It does not matter your age or the mistakes that you may have made. It does not matter who your parents are or who your family is. You can be an overcomer to be a winner. Now look at the person beside you and say, neighbor, you will win. My first point on today out of the three points that I will give is overcoming uncertain times with faith. In the text for my message on today, Joshua chapter 1, the text starts off with God preparing Joshua to take up the mantle that Moses left before he died to lead the Israelites into the promised land. For those who may not know the story of Moses, God ordained Moses to lead the Israelites out of bondage in Israel. The Israelites were very disobedient to Jesus, which made them face many trials that they would not have had to if they only obeyed Jesus. So after Moses died, Joshua was next in line to lead the Israelites to the promised land. Joshua had many challenges, but one of his main challenges was defeating the city of Jericho. If they could not conquer this land, then all hope for the Israelites was gone. In verse 9, Jesus told Joshua to be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God promised protection over those who would attempt to overcome obstacles in the name of Jesus as long as they have faith in him. And I ask you some questions. Do you have faith in God to help you overcome uncertain times? Do you have the faith in God to give you the strength that you need to be an overcomer? What walls or chains need to come down in your life so that you can be more of who God created you to be? If you are up against a wall and want to know how to deal with it, don't try to overcome it under your own strength. Commune with God. Let turning everything over to Jesus through things such as prayer uh -huh. be your first plan of action rather than your last resort. Yes. Faith is a resilient belief in the one true God and an unshakable obedience to his will. Yes. Winners huh, choose to trust in God at the most unpopular times. Right. While we have the option to turn to things that God does not approve of, we must choose to go the Lord's way. Yes. Fear is not our future because of faith. The virtue of true faith is the ability to believe in God when he remains unseen. Yes. In verse 9, God told Joshua, Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. God is always with us, but we must choose to go the Lord's way. Yes. We must declare and decree unto God that even on the hardest days, we will still choose to go the Lord's way because we want to be all His. Anybody want to be all Jesus? Anybody just want to be Jesus? God, you can remove everything. I just want you. God, you can take whatever you need to take on. I want you. You can leave your past behind you and go on to the future. Jesus, I just want you. I feel right. my spirit that that's someone's prayer on today. Jesus, just give me you. You can remove anything out of the way. Jesus, just give me you. When your faith is activated, your confidence is activated, you can hold your head up. You can push your shoulders back. When your confidence is activated, strength is gained. When strength is, strength is gained, your actions start to match the role that you desire to be headed down. Believe in your abilities because of the power of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. When we are on the journey of becoming overcomers with Christ to become a winner, things will happen that we don't always understand. In the face of such a great obstacle, Joshua complied with the plan of God. Though he may not have completely understood the plan or its significance, he followed God. Yeah. 
my favorite Bible verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, goes, For I know your plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Amen. Plans to prosper you on, and not to harm you yeah. and give you a hope and a future. So will you say yes to God so that he can carry you, carry you to your expected end? Yes, Lord. God could use a man like Joshua because he was a man of faith and a man of obedience. He simply followed as God instructed, and the people followed. See, when you have faith in God, it can feel uncomfortable at first. You may feel like having faith in God is not worth it. But I promise you, you will not regret putting your faith in God when he starts to work miracles on your behalf. Yeah, yeah. My second point is the results of limitless faith. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the results of limitless faith. So to recap the story, Joshua and the Israelites were trying to get to the promised land. Oh, what a journey it was. Joshua faced many trials and tribulations, but he chose to keep his faith in God, even in uncertain times. Yes. Due to Joshua having faith in God, Joshua obeyed God. Due to his faith and obedience, he overcame the hardest battle by defeating their biggest enemy. Joshua and the Israelites' biggest enemy was those in the city of Jericho. God commanded Joshua and the Israelites to go around the walls of Jericho. I feel in my spirit that if someone here on today and God is telling you to do something, will you be obedient? The walls of Jericho fell after the Israelites marched around the city walls once a day for six days, seven times on the seventh day, and then blew their trumpets. It can sound crazy, but in the end, by Jesus telling them to do, do this, the walls of Jericho fell, and their biggest enemy was defeated. Somebody shall overcome. You see, the walls were not the problem. They never are. We people are the problem. God has the power to do as he chooses, but he desires that we act in obedient faith. When we do, he takes care of the walls. What walls are holding you back from being an overcomer through Jesus Christ? What chains need to be broken so that you can be a winner? Hebrews 11.30 reminds us, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. When Joshua had faith in God, he did not just overcome obstacles for himself, but he overcame for all of the Israelites so that they would be saved. Yeah. What an act of faith it was for Joshua and the people to march around the city. No previous battle had ever been won in such a manner. Yet around the city, they all marched. It was an act of faith, an act of obedience. Yeah. These are the results of living this faith. Yeah. Right. To be an overcomer, to be a winner, we must have faith. Oh. Having living this faith will empower us to align our actions with what we are trying to achieve. We all have the ability to obtain the results of limitless faith. My third and final point is, I am a winner through Jesus Christ. Look at the person next to you and say, I am, I am a, winner a winner through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. What sets a winner up to win is having optimism over battles. Having optimism means that you look at the positive rather than the negative. Yep. Too long, too much. We look at the negative yep. instead of the positive. Yep. Positive, I'm still alive. Positive, I can do all things through Jesus Christ. Yep. Positive, I can affect someone. Positive, I have a purpose. Positive, I matter. All right. Having optimism means that you are hopeful that God will carry you to your expected end. Jesus told us himself in John 16, that in this world we will have tribulation. Oh, yeah. But take heart, he has overcome uh, the world. You may ask me, Jaden, why are you a winner? Well, I'm glad you asked. I am a winner because Jesus has already overcome the world, and we too can become overcomers with Christ. Yeah. Right. We can overcome temptations from the enemy. We can overcome our sexual desires by cultivating a mindset that makes us control our actions in a way that is holy and honorable unto God. Right. You may then ask me, what makes a winner? Winners take chances and are not afraid to lose. Right. They aren't afraid to take risks, right. but they stay controlled when necessary. Right. 
The idea of losing doesn't scare winners because they are assured that they did everything they could to win. Yeah. Just because you failed or lost a battle doesn't mean you are not a winner. Right. The true loser is someone who never gets back up and try again. But the true winner, y'all, is the one who gets back up and try again. Right. It's better to be on God's side because God, he always wins. Say right now, whatever you are, say, I am, I am. A winner. a winner. What do you want to win over? Uh, I feel like preaching now. Healing from your past hurt. Oh, that sounds like a winner to me. No longer allowing your fear to destroy your faith to success. Oh, that sounds like an overcomer to me. Yeah. Winning over failure, rejection, and addiction. That sounds like a winner to me. The enemy came against your home. The enemy came against your children. The enemy came against your name. The enemy came against your character, but you will win. The enemy came against your health. The enemy came against your finance. The enemy came up against your vision. The enemy came up against your business. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you will win. It's a song that says, I know you're hurt. And I feel like there's some hurt people right now. And I'm telling you, it's your time to heal. Because if you continue hurt, you're just going to hurt other people. Yeah. Let's heal together. I know you're torn. I know you are broken. But we can be on broken pieces. I know it seems like all hope is gone. But you will win. Yeah. All of those may be facts. But the truth still remains, the song says, that in the name of Jesus, yeah. you will win. Yeah. So lay your hands on yourself right now and declare, it's my... Winning season. Oh, come on, y'all. Put your hand on yourself and say, it's my winning season. So you can walk around and you can stand bold. You can stand firm because you know who you are. Because you know you are a king's kid. Everything attached to the win. There's something on the inside of you that's going to help you win in this season. In Romans 8, it tells us that God lives inside of us. You may ask me, why are you a winner? Well, I'm glad you asked. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? You may still ask me, how do you know that you're already a winner? Jesus walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am the Lord. You may still ask me, why are you a winner? It's something, there's something on the inside of me helping me to overcome even in uncertain times. 1 John 4, 4 tells me that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Say, I am, I am a winner. See, you have to speak life into yourself. You have to encourage yourself even when no one else encourages you. You have to declare and decree that you are a winner before it even happens. The more you speak a thing, the more you will believe a thing, the more you believe a thing, the more likely it will come to pass. Parents, can I speak to the parents for a minute? You have to speak life into your children. Motivate and inspire the youth to reach higher heights. Stop only talking about their downfalls and motivate them to triumph over their pitfalls. Declare that you are already a winner. Declare that you are already an overcomer. Declare that you are already victorious. I promise I'm heading on to my seat. I will not die. I will live. But sometimes you have to die, y'all, to live. Right. What do I mean by that? I'm glad you asked. You have to uh, allow your sinful desires, your addiction, yeah. your temptation yeah. to die so that you can pick up the full armor of God and you can start to walk with confidence right. because you know who God is. Yes. When you know who God is, you can find yourself inside of God. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you have to look yourself in the mirror and overcome that negative self-talk. Has anybody in here got a negative self-talk? I know I'm not only talking about myself. You can say to yourself, I am you. I am handsome. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. I am more than an offering than Jesus Christ. I am a king's kid. I am a winner. Jesus came into the world so that the price of our sins could be paid. Jesus was crucified for our sins. Yeah. They hung him high. Yeah. They stretched him wide. Yeah. He hung his head, and then for us, he died. But that's not how the story ends. Because Jesus knew it showing up wasn't the end. 
Can I tell somebody today, it's not the end of your story. God still has so much more in store for you. On the third day, Jesus rose from the dead so that we can be set free. So that the walls of sin would no longer hold us back. Jesus rose so that we can have power. I'm not talking about magical power. I'm not talking about superhero power. I'm talking about spiritual power that comes from the Holy Spirit. No matter your age, you are never too old. You are never too young to be saved. And you can get the power from Jesus to be able to win. Yeah. Romans 10, 9 tells us that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Yeah. Jesus accepts us as who we are. The price has already been paid. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we now can say that we are not only overcomers, but we are winners. Yeah. Can I tell somebody, again, that is not the end of your story, and God still has so much more in store for you. Overcoming uncertain times with faith, the results of limitless faith, I am a winner through Jesus Christ. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you may have done in your past. The past is behind me, and the future is before me. I'm reaching towards something higher, because I know one day God will say, well done, good and my faithful servant. So it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you are. You matter. You have the potential to be successful, and you are one of our God. Repeat after me and say, I am Amen. Amen. Thank you for this opportunity and God bless you. Pastor. Amen. Can you see the doors of the church will open? There might be somebody who doesn't know Christ in the pardon of his or her sins. Musicians are going to bless us with music, choir. And uh, while we are just thinking on these things, yes. I am a winner, you are a winner, we are winners. Yes. Not because we're just winners, but because of Jesus the Christ. This is your opportunity. If somebody who wants to give his or her life to the Lord, who wants to become a winner in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Come, come, come. It's your opportunity. sinner's prayer with you, somebody who might even be joining us virtually, somebody who might be in the sanctuary. And so we pray right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we realize that there are those who are joining us, those who are in this house, and those who are joining us virtually. Know God, after hearing your word, that we are winners. There might be somebody who, down in his or her heart, is feeling like a complete failure. But oh God, we know right now that if we 
confess our sins, you are faithful and you are just to forgive us. So now, gracious master, I pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. If there's a man, woman, boy, or girl who doesn't know you in the pardon of their sins, that he or she might pray even right now, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm lost and I'm undone. I stand in need of your saving power. I stand in need of your holy power. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, as that man, woman, boy, or girl is confessing that he or she is a sinner, I pray, God, that you will listen to that person's prayer. And even as he or she continues, but Lord, I need you to save me, to sanctify my life, to fill me with your Holy Ghost power, and to make me never the same. Pray, God, that as he or she is whispering these words from his or her heart, that, oh, Lord, you will hear him or her. And, oh, God, because we know that you have heard us, we pray, Lord, that uh, that man, woman, boy, or girl might even say, now, Lord, I accept you. I believe you heard me, and I accept you. Even in the pardon of my sins, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. And from this day forward, I'm no longer a loser, but I'm a winner. From this day forward, I walk in newness, and I walk in the blessed name of Jesus the Christ. Now, God, for even those who have been on this pilgrimage for quite some time, but their steps might be slow, they might even feel like, oh, Lord, I don't have the energy to go on. Right now, God, we know that you have renewing power. And we know that you have renewing strength. We're winners, God, and we thank you for that. Now, Lord, we thank you for this service. We thank you for your servant. We thank you for the choir that ushers this waiting congregation. And we thank you for those who have joined us virtually. And if there's anything for which I have failed to ask, my prayer, Heavenly Father, is that you will not fail to grant. You know, God, who we are. You know where we are. You know, God, where we've been. You know, God what we need to give up. You know, God, what the next chapter in our life is. And so, God, we just fully and totally commit ourselves unto you, Jesus the Christ. God, we thank you, we love you, and we walk in newness. We walk in uh, the winning name of Jesus the Christ. We walk in the winning power of Jesus the Christ. And we thank you for this service and for this opportunity just to walk in newness. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 We will now have remarks from our new supervisor, Supervisor Deaconess Alice Gales, followed by remarks and benediction from our pastor, Reverend Joseph Brown. Good morning. Good morning. God be the glory for all he has done. God is great and greatly to be praised. We praise God for all the um, blessings that that he's given us today and it is indeed an honor and a privilege to be able to come and celebrate with our graduates and with our youth. Um, we thank our pastor, Reverend Joseph Radliff, for his leading and his guiding as we prepared our program. We thank evangelist Jaden Watkins. What an awesome word from the Lord. Thank oh, yeah. you for that motivation for our youth to carry with them through the summer, through the rest of their lives even. Thank you. Um, we also thank Reverend Shelton. Reverend Shelton Anderson was so nice and helpful. He was kind enough even to do a Zoom for our young adults that weren't able to get here. And he was able to do the mics and so forth as we practice. And we do praise God for him. Yeah. We also praise God for Reverend Moore Burroughs, our musician, who was patient and understanding as we tried and tried to pick out songs, and he was here to help and lead in God. To all, to all the parents, families, the missionaries, um, the, the entire Shiloh Church family, we say thank you. Because this it's been four years since we were able to celebrate. Yeah. And so everybody just stepped in and pitched in. They did whatever that was needed. We um we thank our youth and our young adult. I didn't have to persuade anybody to do anything, or as Demetrius says, I didn't have to volunteer anyone to do anything. They all volunteered, <coughs> stepped up, and no matter what I asked, they did with the Holy Spirit. And it means so much because 
it takes courage to yep. stand up and yep. to yep. pray yep. and to, to do the um, scripture and so forth. And they did it with a willing spirit. And you can look. We even had Daniel Anderson to create a flyer for um, our announcement for social media for Youth Day. And we're just grateful and thankful for all of and if you look at the choir stand, you see there are more young adults in it than you. So we praise God for our young adults. We have two that I want to mention. Um, if Sister Kayla and Sister Demetrius will come forward, please. Just come. The old man, come on. <laughs> when we said we were going to do our youth day, I looked at Kayla and I said, Kayla, I need you. All she said was, yes, Miss Alice. <laughs> But we just want to give them a token, just a token of love. Amen. This is my right hand. She sends all the texts to the youth. She does everything, no matter what. All she does, and I know I get, I get on her nerves. But all she does is smile and say, "Yes, Miss Alice." And I love her. We want them to know that we appreciate them. Because without them, this could not have been done. So we but um, for lunch, because we're still being safe, we have lunch bags in the um, fellowship hall. So if you just walk through and pick up a bag for lunch. And we just thank everybody. And for our youth, I want you to remember what Evangelist will, um, Walken said, he said, you will win, and you yep. will. Remember our theme, we are overcomers, because what does Philippians tell us? I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Thank you. Amen, amen. You know, it's been a while since we've been able to gather together for a special day, a special time. And of course, this just seems right, just feels right. Our voice can start with a youth day, an honor the graduates day. After having um, gone through COVID the last three years and on the backside now of COVID, uh, when the youth supervisor came to me and some of the other persons, I just thought, Lord, this just seems right, just feels right. And uh, what a great service, what a great day, what a powerful word from God's man servant. Uh, evangelist Watkins and so we speak the same words of thank you to Evangelist uh, Watkins as well as Sister Daniel Anderson, Sister Raya Gant, as well as the choir, as well as Reverend Shelton Anderson for his technological services and skills, as well as Reverend Paul Barrows, as well as the youth supervisor, uh, Deaconess Alice Gales, as well as the parents, as well as all of you for helping make all of this possible. And most of all, we give honor and homage to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And to our graduates, and I want Sister Jasmine Long as well as Sister Ashley Murphy to come forward. Uh, we just want to say, even as they are coming, that uh, at Shiloh Baptist Church, we believe in you. And we do believe that with God, all things are possible. And that uh, with God, your possibilities are endless. Amen. With God, your possibilities are endless. There are a whole lot of people in this house, in this room, in this world who are proud of you, but I don't think anybody can be more proud of you than I am. And so I want to take the time to just come and give you a hug on behalf of Shiloh and to say thank you, God's blessings. Be upon you. It's a great mighty day. Thank you. It's a great mighty day. that they have received. Uh, Sister Jasmine Long was selected to receive the Sunday school gift, and so we salute her. Uh, being a high school student, we salute her and give thanks to Almighty God as well. Now let's just share a few housekeeping matters, and then uh, we will come to the close of this particular service, but certainly not to the close of God's very presence. 
um, after the service, as you have heard, if you would join us in the Mother John and Wysana's Mother Purpose Building, you would come to the front and go directly down the hall, make a left turn at the very end, and there are um, snack bags that have been prepared for you, and we trust that you will go there. This will be your opportunity, of course, to receive what has been prepared for you. And also, we will have our, this being the second Sunday, we will have our regular food bank distribution. So for those of you who will be picking up through food bank distribution, all that you need to do is that you need to get in your cars and drive to the front of the Mother John and Wife Santa's Mobile Purpose Building. We don't want you to forget that on this coming Tuesday evening at the 7 o'clock hour, we will have our virtual Sunday school. And of course, all are invited to be a part. On next Saturday, which is June 17th, that will be the third annual Henderson Juneteenth um, Juneteenth Festival. And this will be at Vance County Courthouse Square from 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock. There will be music, food, vendors, bounce house, face paintings, all kinds of crafts, praise, dance, academy, work in progress, uh, the Reverend Evelyn Couch, and so, so many others uh, will be gathering. And we uh, trust that you will, of course, go and take advantage of this particular uh, opportunity. Then on Thursday, June 22nd, uh, Grawl, which we uh, partnered with, will be having a screening here uh, on our lot. And of course the screening, so I'm told, will entail weight, uh, blood pressure, and sugar check. And the time is being determined, but possibly it will be from 10 to 12 noon. And we trust, of course, that you will Put that on your calendar and that you will take advantage of that as well. For all the persons who are part of our sick and our shut in list, we pray for you, we pray with you, and as we have been doing, we continue to pray for you. So good to see Sister Brenda Gant, who is in the house today. Uh, good to have you. Back today. We have prayer moments. Remember all of those who are part of our prayer list, and along with those particular names, might we lift up in special prayer. Brother John Richardson, he's the brother of Sister Patricia Richardson, and of course, uh, he is in need of much prayer. Uh, he's in the hospital. You might you remember our very own mother, Zelma Kaysen, my wife, uh, went to check on her, and she has been taken to Mariah. She's in the emergency room even at this time. So might we remember Mother Zelma Kaysen in our prayer, as well as Mother Freddie LeMay, but remember Mother Kaysen who has been taken to the hospital. Now, God, we thank you so much for these, your servants, and we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you, God, that we walk not in our strength, we walk not in our power, but we walk in the power and the strength of Jesus the Christ. We thank you, God, for your servant who came and shared a powerful word with us, an encouraging word with us, an encouraging word for not only our youth, but for our, our young adults, as well as for our seniors, for all of us, God's people, that we overcomers and that we have power even in Jesus the Christ. We will win. It doesn't matter how things look. It doesn't matter how uncertain things are in this chaotic world. We're already winners. Thank you, God, for that word. Thank you for the Psalms, the hymns of Zion that have been shared. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for those who joined us, started not robbery to join us either virtually or in person on this the Lord's day. Thank you for every worship participant. Now, God, we go from this place, but we don't go from your presence. And we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ that you will put a covering over all of us, even for the young folks, the young, as well as the youthful. We pray, God, that you will put a covering over them as they have come to the end of another school year. That, oh, God, they will stay safe over this summer. Put a covering over them, God. Bind the demonic forces and spirits that will seek to destroy, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And whether they go to the left or to the right, whether they go straight, God, we pray you covering over them. Pray, Heavenly Father, uh, for our parents, for parents in this season, that you will put a covering over them, that they will, uh, oh God, listen to your voice, and that they will lead their children, your children, in the admonition of the Lord. And even for our grandparents and great-grandparents, aunts and uncles, and, and other extended family members who are reaching in, trying to make a difference in their lives, people and especially the lives of youth. We pray, oh God, you're covering over them. Pray, God, for those who have not been able to join us in service. 
wherever they are, whatever their circumstances are, we pray, oh God, your blessings on them. And for those, God, who are here, we pray your blessings over them. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in the blessed name of Jesus the Christ. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Live in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Guys.